morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560-4 Spider. That is a very big mouthful. But basically Gallardo is Spanish for a type of bull. LP is the short for an Italian word which says that the car is motor rear engined. 560 is actually the amount of PS that the car has and not the amount of horsepower. This car actually has 553 horsepower not 560 as many people think. The Dash 4 is for the four-wheel drive and the Spider with a Y is to indicate that the car is a convertible. This is probably the only Spider in the world which people are actually happy to see and don't run away from. We're going to jump straight into this video by hopping out and looking at the exterior and the interior. We're then going to come back in and go for a little drive. If you don't want to hear my voice and you just want to appreciate that glorious V10 sound, I'll also leave a video down below description where you can do just that and you can appreciate the full might of this bull. For a car that is nearly nine years old I think many would agree with me that the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560-4 Spider still does look very very good. Part of the reason why this car has aged very very well is due to the fact that it has some of Lamborghini's modern design language with the flared front vents as well as the Y shape that you see in the headlights. The side profile is very, very clean. You have the door handles which are recessed into the body and you have the iconic side vents. The rear of the Gallardo is a fairly simple design. You have this long vent which was extended across the entire width of the car before that was three separate vents. And you also have new slimmer tail lights again with that beautiful Y design. You also have some very big exhaust and a nice large diffuser. Overall though, especially in this white, I think the Lamborghini Gallardo is a very nice blend between sporty elegance and the aggressiveness that Lamborghini brings to the table. This car has the 19 inch wheel option which fits the car absolutely perfectly. It also has the standard black brake calipers with the Lamborghini logo written on it. A nice little touch is that the tire valve cap has the exact same knurling which you see on the inside of the car. While the interior of the Gallardo is not nearly as nice or as aggressive as what you get today in the Aventador or the Huracan, it is still a very nice place to be and you can definitely get the jet fighter feeling in it. This car has the sportier interior with the Alcantara and the diamond stitching. A nice little touch to the car's Italian heritage is the fact that all the gauges actually have the Italian name. So instead of putting battery, they put the Italian word for battery, which is batteria. The infotainment system in the Gallardo is basically the same as what you get in the Audi, except they've obviously redesigned it slightly. But a lot of the infotainment buttons and even the climate control buttons come straight off the VW Group. In the middle here, we have Lamborghini's very own buttons with a little bit of knurling. They also push in and out, so it gives you that feeling like you are in a fighter jet. You do, however, get a CD player and two SD card slots, which are nicely hidden behind the screen. Coming down here you have your controls to change the mirror, you have the rear view camera and the front nose lift which is very very useful on a car that is this slow. You then have your driver modes, Corsa being the racy setting, automatic meaning you can switch between automatic and manual on the e-gear and then you have sport. Further down we have a button to control the retractable roof and we also have a button to control the rear view window. The steering wheel is very, very simple. There are absolutely no buttons on it to distract you away from the business that is driving. That is very different to today's supercars where you can essentially control the entire car from the steering wheel. To change gears on the Gallardo, you have to use the flappy paddles which are fixed to the steering column. This means that they do not move at all. Some people like this because the gears are always in the same place. Some people don't like this because if you're cornering, you're going to have to move your hands a little bit more. To engage reverse also, there's a little button here which you click. Although this is a thoroughbred supercar, Lamborghini still managed to put a glove box. That is something that you don't actually find on every single supercar. If you come up here as well, you have one of the smallest sun visors in history with a very, very small mirror as well. In between the two seats, you have a small little compartment, a 12 volt plug, and you also have some lights. If there's one thing, however, that you've noticed that is missing in the entirety of this car is that there is not a single cup holder to put your drinks. The boot on the car is absolutely tiny. You could basically only fit in one hand luggage or maybe a few duffel bags. You also get a wing which raises at high speeds to aid stability. While this is a Italian supercar, you're still going to get the exact same swivel key in the Volkswagen Jetta and Polo. 
As we mentioned at the start of the video, the LP560-4 is four-wheel drive with a 30-70 split between the front and rear axles. It puts down 553 horsepower very, very comfortably with that four-wheel drive system. Even in sport mode and in Corsa where the car does allow you a little bit more slip, it still is incredibly, incredibly composed. The steering wheel of the Gallardo is of course very, very direct. At high speeds you have incredible control of the car and especially while cornering. At low speeds and around town it might be a little bit cumbersome, a little bit heavy and it definitely doesn't give you that sort of go-kart feeling if you're hopping around traffic. The suspension is of course very, very stiff. It is meant to be a sporty ride. It is however helped out a little bit by the fact that it does not have run flat tyres. So on longer journeys you're actually not going to feel it that bad. The soundtrack that you get out of the LP560 is also, in my opinion, one of the best. This was before Lamborghini started artificially adding pops and crackles to every downshift and to every time you let off the accelerator. What that means is that you get a very natural, very pure exhaust tone from the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560. The zero to 100 time on the Gallardo is 3.8 seconds. Well, that is not as impressive as what you get today in the Huracan or in the Ventador. I don't think you're really going to complain because you get to hear that beautiful V10 soundtrack for just a little bit longer. If you are pushing the Gallardo and you need that stopping power, you'd be happy to hear that Lamborghini did rework the ventilation systems on the brakes, so you shouldn't really get much fading. The car also has 8 piston Brembo brake calipers up front and 4 piston Brembo brake calipers at the rear, which means that you should have plenty of stopping power to bring this car to a stop. The Gallardo does have a single clutch e-gear transmission. While that might not be the fastest, it is definitely a gearbox which adds to the drum of the car. When you change gears under full acceleration, the car gives you a good solid thud and it definitely adds to the theatrics of the experience. To round up then, for me, a supercar and in fact any car is not about the stats or its quarter mile time or how quickly it does 0 to 100. For me, a car and especially a supercar is how it makes you feel. It's about the excitement and the thrills and the drama that it brings to the table. And in that respect, I don't think anybody does drama and theatrics as well as Lamborghini does. If you are that person who doesn't really care that much about tracking their car or cares about having the latest and greatest but just drives their car on that occasion Sunday to enjoy, then nine years on, the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560-4 is still going to serve you absolutely amazingly well. And that brings us to the end of this car review. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. If you have any comments, please feel free to drop them down below and hopefully I'll see you in the video fairly soon.